Mom, the Wi-Fi is down. Not long ago, these words would have never been heard in our home or yours. Now losing the Wi-Fi and the ability to connect with technology can create a lot of problems and frustration. If you're anything like me, disconnecting is a very welcome relief. But today, we're thrilled to connect with and welcome back to The Difference, New York Times best-selling author and one of our favorite voices on family, marriage, and parenting, Dr. Kevin Lehman. Dr. Lehman will share the do's and don'ts of raising a family in a high-tech world. You're watching The Difference. Welcome to The Difference. It is our honor to have on the set with us today our dear friend, Dr. Kevin Lehman. Dr. Kevin, so good to see so you again. See Thank you. you for being here. Well, it's no secret. I love coming here. I <laughs> love talking to you guys. We talk about life as it really is. Well, you know, life is as, as it is and life as it should be. Should be. Uh, because so many people get in the struggle of, you know, balancing what, what they want and, and what they allow. And today we're talking about technology and, and how technology impacts family and, and how to kind of really be a traditional family in a high speed modern world. How much screen time is too much screen time? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a great question because there's research that goes back as far as 30 or 40 years that just basically says screen time is not good for children. We learned this during COVID where kids were on the screen yeah. all the time with sco Correct. their schooling. And we see the drop in the learning from this point to this point. And it's universal across the board. A young men, young women, any socioeconomic level, everything got dumbed down. 53% of 11 year olds, for example, have smartphones in the US. 11 year olds. Yeah. It jumps to about 83% when you talk about that 16, 17 16, year old yeah. kid. Well, and, and you know, so much of what they engage in uh, really has, and, and I don't know that I've got enough information to say this with any measure of authority other than just observation. It's got addictive qualities about it. It is addictive. Be because there's no way they can put it down. And when you, when you try and, and make them put it down, they act like they're going through detox. I mean, right. they literally shake. All right, two <laughs> things. Stop at a red light, okay? Look at the person next to you, okay? The cell phone is out. They're looking at it. Did I get, did I get any messages? It's crazy. Go in a restaurant and watch two couples, okay? And they might have their phones up. Then they put them down because there's conversation going around. If it's just the couple, just two, chances are the cell phones are out. If it's a family of four, all cell phones are all out. Cell phones. So I call this little sucker. <laughs> you have yours, I love it. It's an object lesson. Yeah. This is it's the an new, illustration. The new Goliath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this puppy's not going away. No. Yeah. So it's we gotta deal with smarter. it one way or another. But the question I get asked all the time is, oh, Dr. Lima, when is it appropriate to give that child a smartphone. Well, now they even have it at doctor's offices. Well visits. You oh. can have up to this much screen time from age two to three or, and you're sitting there going, age two? I read those things. I laugh out loud, Kendall. The, 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 uh, some of those people, they need to go back to school. Let's put it that way. Screen time is not good for kids. It's appalling for me to walk in a supermarket. There's a little kid in a stroller. He's 18 months old. He's got an appliance in his hand. Yeah. But let's go back to that statement. When's the appropriate time to give your kid the smartphone? smartphone. Well, let's start with this eye-catching thought. Giving your kid a cell phone, okay? Number one, you're giving them a conduit to the sewer of the world. Because mm -hmm. the connectivity is unbelievable. Right. Yeah. So it, and let's talk about the give them a cell phone. Now, wait a minute. What's wrong? with a child who's 16 or 17 years old. Paying for it. Okay, paying for it, working for it. And does this kid have a track record, so to speak, of good decisions all the way to 16 or 17? Then I might consider letting that kid purchase yeah. a smartphone under our supervision. But today, the way things have evolved, looking at how kids you ask yourself, how are kids doing today? They're killing themselves, they're overdosing in huge numbers. The social media thing, oh. 
my suggestion, this is just bottom line, get your kid. Oh, Dr. Lane, we're very concerned about our <laughs> child's safety. 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 I hear that from other moms. Yeah. Like, I'm oh, giving yeah. them a cell phone so they can communicate with me That's at right. school if there's or an drop emergency, off or pick up. There's no pay phones anymore. How are they going to reach me and let me know that they're done? I could never forgive myself if something happened and well, I wasn't <laughs> able to communicate. <laughs> I'm guilty. For $149, you can walk into a Verizon store and you can get a little gizmo watch. Uh, and it has okay. 10 numbers on it that you can put in there that your kid can talk to. And the newest one has a little camera on it because you know how kids love to do... Selfies. <laughs> Selfies. They're kids. <laughs> now, so kids, you got to understand that they're kids. They're, they're immature. They're, their fr frontal lobes aren't developed. developed. They're, yeah. They haven't grown up yet. And like dummies, we just give kids things. Yeah, a lot of it is based on the self-justification of convenience. You know, it's convenient for the parent to see the child check out of a social setting right. by staring at an iPad. It's convenient for the parent to be able to pull up an app and, and believe that wherever that child's cell phone is, they are too. Okay. You know, I, I tell parents all the time, I said, what you, what you have is a digital footprint of where that phone is. You don't have a clue, clue where that kid at. is. Right. With you know, the phone or without. And, and, and you know, the, it's, for some folks, that's a light bulb that pops on. Uh, but when you look at it in the context of the development and the detriment that it creates, most of the time it, it's taking the life of that child in a direction that parents would not choose for them. And, and it's all in a matter of convenience. Right. Well, check out the young couple, uh, and they got a four-year-old and a six-year-old, and they go out to the local chain dinner place. Out pops the appliances, and yeah. the parents set them up right in front of them. So and the only time that the child wants anything from mom and dad is if the, the, the movie stopped or the Wi-Fi went absolutely. down or, you know, my, ear, my earbuds are, are burnt up. Or... And somebody's thinking, hey, Lehman, you know, I've had enough of you. You know, yeah. I just want some time to talk to my wife. So would you let me set these things up and let the kids, yeah, I get it. But here's the problem. There ought to be some sacred time in families. Oh, prayer is very, I'm not talking about prayer. I'm talking about having dinner, dinner together. Yeah. But it's crazy. It's heavily addictive. It's not good for your families. It's not good for your marriage. It's not good for your kids. It's made schoolwork way, way, way too easy for kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do kids cheat in school? Absolutely. They do. Yeah. And so, some of the old ways that and we they have things. since the beginning of time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they'll continue. Yeah. But why foster that? Why sponsor yeah. that? Parents. Why make it downloadable? <laughs> you, you, yeah. You, you have an opportunity to leave an indelible imprint on your kids based upon who you are, what you believe in, your faith, all those things. You want those values and virtues imprinted on your kids then you have to be able to communicate and talk with your kids without asking questions. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the ill effects of social media and how it can distort your child's perception of self. This is an important topic that maybe you should be aware of because it could be affecting your home and you don't even know it. You're watching The Difference with Dr. Kevin Lehman. Israel is the only nation on earth created by a sovereign act of God. This is the land where Jesus was born and where he will return to rule for 1,000 years. This year commemorates the 75th anniversary of Israel's statehood. As Christians, it is imperative that we celebrate with our Jewish brethren and that we recognize their absolute title to the Holy Land today and forever. Please send your best possible gift in support of Israel and you'll receive our Hagee Ministries and Israel Keychain, along with our Why Christians Should Support Israel booklet. For your gift of $200 or more, we'll also include a gold mezuzah with the Star of David and a framed Hebrew home blessing. In a world filled with chaos and anti-Semitism, let us be the voice echoing God's eternal love. Receive these gifts today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org slash support. Welcome back to The Difference with Dr. Kevin Lehman. We're talking about social media and the effects that it has on our children. And I know as a mother of four with two girls and two boys, three of them have social media, that it affects my oldest daughter 
I believe, more than my son's because of her self-image and how she looks at social media and the comparison. How have you seen that with social media and teens? Well, I think it's uh, it's really important for parents to ask themselves this question. How do you want your kid to see themselves, their worth? You want your kid's worth upon what other 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds think about life? Or do you want your kids to be rooted in what is the truth? What does God say about that? That they are a special person that God, the scripture says, I even know the number of hairs on your kid's head. That's, I, I, you know, I know when, the, when the sparrow falls, yeah. you know, your kid's a precious instrument. Social media today, you know, you don't have to say it face to face. You just get out and say something nasty or snippy. And kids today, I mean, this is late breaking news. They're nasty little suckers. <laughs> and women, young women. Women are probably. They're, they're like much more into social activities. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, the way I kind of view it is that so many of those platforms allow people a voice when they shouldn't even have an opinion. Right. You know, you, you post a picture of yourself and people say all kinds of things that are, they're, they're too cowardly to say to your face. Right. But because they've got a comment button, they feel like they can say something and they'll camouflage it. Oh yeah. Would Jesus want you to look this way? Oh yeah. You know, and, and, and now it sounds really spiritual, but it's just, it's nasty. Yeah, it, it's, it's, nasty. it's with the intent of degrading someone's self-worth. And you know, the truth is kids have been cruel to each other, from the beginning. you know, yeah. from the beginning of time. And I mean, it, it, nanny, nanny, boo, boo has always been a big, uh, a big I'll meet bad you game. On the recess playground you know, after. but the thing that social media has done is it gives the bad actors an opportunity to inflict a wound it does. without having to face the consequences of doing it. And that's why I say giving your kid access to a smartphone too early is never a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm talking to my own granddaughter, and she says, Grandpa, look at this. I got 18 likes. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. And I looked at her and said, Honey, no, it's not good. What do you mean it's not good? I said, Honey, do you want to go through life and have everybody like you? And she said, Yeah. I said, Honey, you're in for a big surprise. Not everybody. You know what? It's more important that you figure out who you are. It's more important for your son or daughter to figure out who they are in relationship to who? Yes. Their creator. Mm -hmm. Than it is to be influenced by all these people who know nothing. It's opinion. Yeah. They hide behind yeah. the computer, like you say, or the cell phone, and they throw out that nasty things. But the, the the things we read about where kids are encouraging another kid to take his life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we live in an age where kids are and, overdosing are, on everything. Yeah, not only are they being encouraged to do it, they're actually doing it. Yeah. You know, and, and then parents wake up one day shocked. And unfortunately, the reason that they're unaware is because they're just not paying close enough attention to who's speaking to your child's life. Yeah. You know, so, so this is blasphemy in some circles, but I'm just telling you, there's a difference between what kids want, what they need. And your kid does not need a smartphone. So yeah. realistically, we have a lot of our viewers that are watching, their, their kids have smartphones. Two of our kids have a smartphone. And, and once things go up on the internet, it's forever. they're there. It's forever. Yeah. And th this is not, a secret. I mean, it happens all the time, but I mean, it's crazy what happens. Well, and you know, you mentioned they don't need a smartphone, yet there's a lot of society that drives, you know, education oh, through, yeah. through that apparatus. Uh, if your kids are involved in sports, coach Apps. says, I've got an app and you download the app and that's how you're going to get your schedule information. Because of the convenience of it, in, in many ways, as you've said, you know, it's not going anywhere. Parents have got to have a game plan about yeah. how to manage it because it is a reality. Yeah. It, it's an elephant in the room and you're either going to ride it or get trampled right. on. So <laughs> if the cell phone is there and you made that decision as a parent, I can't change your mind. You've already bought the cell phone. Then you have to have the I rules. You can't cancel that monthly rules. plan. Okay, but here, <laughs> here's the thing about rules. Rules without I mean, relationship lead to rebellion. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so who makes the rules? Number one, if I'm the parent, I'm going to say, all right, let me see. You come up with the rules. Yes. These kids are going to come up with the rules. See, when I'm talking about parenting, I talk about parental poker. Now, again, we have some Baptists who like to call that parental fish or <laughs> parental old maid. 
I call it parental poker. But you got four aces, parents. You got in your pocket. You got four aces in your back pocket. You are in authority over your child. They can't participate in that sport without your signature. They can't get your cell phone without your signature. signature. And all those kind of things. So realize that you come in a position of strength and you've got all this experience. Yeah. So don't let the kid run over you. And, and that's yeah. what happens today. Well, we do it at our house. We have apps that you can literally shut your phone down for, for, for your kids. And I've even accidentally shut his phone down at 9 p.m. <laughs> But I gave him back parental consent, like he was able to get back on so his bothered. cell phone. Now, let me tell you something. But she's a good woman. Well, <laughs> she could shut my phone down six different times a day, and I wouldn't care. If she hides the remote control, that's we're a different go, story. We're going to yeah, I'm control. calling Liam and but say, listen, she's hit the remote. But there's apps that parents can get aware of that you could literally take control back and take those phones yeah. and put on how many hours they can spend on social media. Our oldest daughter, Hannah, noticed that she was spending hours going back to the same photos on social media, she got off of it completely. Right. And it's like, you know what? I'm gonna take a break. And she said, for three months, I noticed that I was getting in the word of God more. My grades were better. I was well, sleeping she, at night without the phone content. next and, to and her. And the only time that it became a conversation between us was when her friends, who noticed that she was no longer liking their pictures, or Hannah, her friends who, who noticed that she wasn't commenting on the things that they posted were were trying to Convince create. Her to they, come back. they were trying to create some kind of pressure of irrelevance because she didn't have a TikTok account. I, I'm just saying, hey, I, I know I sound like an archaic fool to some people when I'm talking about, hey, your kid doesn't need a smartphone. But those little, I go back to those little gizmo watches and stuff. You want to opportunity to know where your kid is to communicate. I get all that stuff as a parent. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying we've just fallen into this trap where this is just a necessity of life. Okay. Yeah. And it's not. And it's not. So as a professional psychologist and someone who, you know, has spent a lot of time researching patterns of behavior, I would guess that there are certain patterns that parents should look for to recognize when their children are involved in unhealthy engagements, for example, in social media. Well, if you look at, again, the statistics of kids who are on drugs prescribed by their physician because of depression and so forth, it's gone sky high. Mm -hmm. it has. Why? A lot of it, the genesis of it, if you want to point to it, yeah. is social media. And what's happening to kids, they're getting hammered. A kid that's 12, 13 years old, you know, the last person that kid wants to be in school is himself. Yeah. Because they compare themselves to everybody else. My friend Jim Dobson said it years ago, a kid's moving along in life all of a sudden, he hits age 11, 12, 13, he called it the canyon of inferiority. Mm -hmm. And I love that term because it's like this kid sailing along all of a sudden, Drop down. he drops off the cliff. Yeah. Well, something's happening. It's called adolescence, okay? And here's what parents need to understand. Your kid will do anything, and I'm telling you anything, to fit in. Mm -hmm. They want to belong. In the Lehman books, in a book called uh, Have a New Kid by Friday, I talk about the ABCs of parenting, acceptance, Mm -hmm. You have to accept your kid, okay, for who he or she is. They need to have a sense of belonging. Their belonging ought to be the home. That's the central place. So the mundane things we do, like regular bedtimes and their own room and their own, that builds self-confidence in kids. It gives them a sense of security. And then competence, not confidence, competence. A, acceptance, B, belonging, C, competence. Your kid has to be competent, okay? That means that they, this is a new word for some children, work. <laughs> they give back to the family. I love to ask families, are you raising your kid in a ho home or hotel? Most families raise their kids in hotels. Okay. What does that mean? We give them room service, food service, everything is given to them, mm -hmm. and little is requested of them. That doesn't build strong character. Yeah. So again, parents, what we're talking about today, technology is important, but you gotta go back to, what do you want your kid to identify with? How do they get their self-worth? From your words of encouragement, dad, especially to your daughter. Yes. Yeah. To your words of encouragement, mom, especially to your sons. sons. 
because that's the opportunity where a kid says, you know what, I'm loved. Absolutely. When we come back, we're going to talk about creating a game plan for being a traditional family in a high-tech world. Yeah. I assure you, it's not as difficult as you think, and the blessings can be something that will benefit you for years to come. You're watching The Difference. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm so grateful that I chose differently. I'm so happy that I chose you. I get to see you become the person God intended you to be. I'm grateful for Sanctuary of Hope, for preparing me, for guiding me. Most importantly, Sanctuary of Hope is my safe place. It's where I can lay my baby's head down and know that God has a shield of protection over us. Thank you, Hagee Ministry Legacy Partners. Because of you, my baby has a chance. Because of you, I had the option to choose life. There has never been a better time to share the love of Christ with a mother and a child than right now. When you partner with Hagee Ministries, your legacy impacts lives and transforms a nation. Call today or go to jhm.org partner. Welcome back to The Difference. Dr. Lehman, as we were going out of the last segment, you're talking about hotels versus houses. And, you know... I'm often reminded of the responsibilities that my parents placed on us as children that, you know, we didn't necessarily consider them responsibilities. They're just our part, part of, of the, being part the, of the, 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 the whole, you know, and the things that my parents placed on me were somewhat uh, less burdensome than what they had placed on them. And now you kind of look at, at, you know, generations. three generations later, you know, where's the balance to where you look and say a child not only can do this, but they should do this because we're getting to a point where, you know, kids don't have to do any measure of work until they get out of college. Yeah. And then after a four year degree that mom and dad paid for and a lifetime of A's and, and accolades and medals and, and ribbons and awards, Somebody looks at him and says, congratulations, you've graduated college, now go get a job. Right, that's the hard part. Oh, and that's the most terrifying thing they could ever hear in their whole life. Right. You know, when do you look at a child and say, it's healthy for you to start doing something productive so that you will feel the reward of achievement? I think it starts early in life with early training, and I'm talking about age three. I'm talking about a kid age three can learn to take the dishes out of the dish dryer uh, uh -huh. and, and help and do little things and be in their own room. Again, start that independence early in life. Kids need to give back to the family, okay? And as they do, they become a part of the family. And then you talk about putting together a plan years later and you bit the cell phone thing and yeah. you, you got it, it's there. Now we're gonna have to have a little team meeting here. But you also have to understand there's two key elements every kid needs. Vitamin E, which is encouragement, not praise, encouragement, and also vitamin N, which is no. no. So yeah. you don't give There's up boundaries. your authority. Uh -huh. You have the right to say, no, that's not going to happen. Correct. Okay. And I always told my kids, listen, I'll take the hit on why you can't go there. Just tell the kids yeah. your dad well, won't let yeah. you go. Your mm -hmm. mom won't let you go. We'll take the hit. It helps you in the save yeah. a little face in the peer group. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you get to be the victim and we get to be the vicious. That's but, right. Yeah. yeah. Make it easy on yourselves. But yeah. the point is, as we give kids an opportunity to give back, they're building confidence in themselves that they can do things. Correct. Okay? Yeah. I'm a somebody. I go back to acceptance, belonging, competence. I'm a competent person. Mm -hmm. But we have kids who graduate from four year schools. Parents spend all kinds of money to educate them, or worse, and that they take out educational loans to make it happen, yeah. and then they move home and they don't have no skills. Well, and, and you know, when you talk about skills and technology, you're talking about children participating and putting back in the family. I think, and I even heard you mention this, how your kids can probably do more with technology to help you pay your bills, to streamline oh, yeah. and become a more efficient household. So there are ways where you can actually use technology to say to your son or your daughter, hey, you get online and you pay the utility bill so that you know what it costs exactly. every time you leave the light on. Exactly, and for us old folks, I mean, I love the cell phone. Uh, 
if I could find it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like it's hey Siri, uh, what day is it? Yeah. And what month is it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> and when's my birthday? Yeah, I mean, I do like, I like the convenience of a cell phone. And yeah. uh, I was telling you, break, I've written chapters of books on my cell phone, just dictating yeah. them back and forth to my editor who lives up in Chicago. Correct. So, well, you know, that? every piece of technology has a good and a bad element oh, yeah. to it. it. It increases your efficiency. I mean, I remember my grandfather writing and typing his messages on a typewriter. And, oh, yeah. and, and, you know, I mean, the amount of white out and typewriter ribbon that he went through to get a message out was absurd. When a word processor came out, my dad thought he'd walked into heaven. Oh, yeah. You know, now, as you mentioned, you can turn on a microphone on your computer yeah. and dictate and right. it will type for you. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's even technology beyond that where, you know, they call it artificial intelligence. You can say to your computer, write me a paper about this subject and it will start to pull resources from all over the globe and, and put the content together. The problem is, is none of that's yours. I got it to Matt. I got to confess something. I've, I've said some inappropriate things to Siri. Uh-oh, yes, <laughs> we did. Are y'all on speaking terms still? I've, I've called her some names. <laughs> you know what she says? That's not nice. That's not nice, she told me that yesterday too. I don't talk to Siri. My wife refuses to allow me to engage with women outside of supervision. So. There you go. All right. <laughs> so balance is the key with our kids. If we can like monitor it, if we have them charge their phones outside of the room, if we're looking at their material, as long as we're balanced and healthy boundaries, it's... So my message to parents is really simple. You know, you do have those four aces in your back pocket. You know, you are uh, obligated to be in authority over your children not authoritarians and not permissive. And again, most families tend to be permissive today mm -hmm. as opposed to authoritarian. But keep in mind that either one spurs rebellion in your kid's heart. Correct. If you're in a healthy authority and Almighty God is the supreme mm -hmm. authority, his scripture says every knee shall bow. Wow. So we're not talking about a mamby-pamby God here. Yeah. We're talking about a decisive my word is this, my yes is yes, my no is no. Yeah. And that parent who can stay balanced in the middle of those two polarizations mm -hmm. is gonna be a good parent for those kids to grow up. Absolutely. Yeah. We want you to have the benefit of experiencing that balance in your home, not to isolate or withdraw from a modern world, but to mm -hmm. realize that there are more important things than being right. high tech. And one of those is being connected to the people that God put in your life the precious children that he gave you, and the family that's sitting around your dinner table. Kendall and I want to thank you for being a part of this program. If you'd like to find out more information about Dr. Kevin Lehman and his works, I encourage you to find his works online at thebirthorderguy.com or find out more information by following his podcast. God bless you and thank you for watching The Difference. <laughs>